everybody, Ben here from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios, and I'm back with more tips for the intermediate artist. Today we're looking at bad painting practices that you should try and avoid. Now I should note before we get started that these tips are specific to acrylic painters. A lot of these things won't make a lot of sense if you use oils or watercolors, so specifically these are bad habits for, for acrylic painters to be having. The first of these is to always use a Stay Wet palette. Now if you're unfamiliar with the Stay Wet palette, it acts in a similar way to a plastic container does for food, in that it's a plastic uh, bin or tray or palette with little reservoirs for your paint, and it has a airtight lid so you can seal the uh, paint colors you have made away and keep using them uh, for your next project, whether you're painting in a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Now, these are really uh, useful to have in general, and I'm not saying don't use them at all because that would be stupid, but if you use one constantly, if you never wash it, if you never clean out the paint, and you're always relying on that same mix of colors you started with, what this does is it doesn't teach you color theory and paint mixing because your colors are really always there. Uh, so if you just use the same uh, paint over and over and over again, and somebody says, oh, can you make me up some of this color? And you're like, oh, I don't know how because it's not on my palette. It's like, well, obviously you're doing yourself a disservice there. Next up, there's the idea of using too little paint. Now, specifically with acrylics, this is a huge problem. Uh, not so much uh, in general, just because you're gonna, things are gonna dry quickly, and that's you know kind of obvious. But the one thing is, uh, you will be able to notice when looking at the canvas. You're like, oh, it looks like watercolor and if it's not intentional it just looks like you don't know what you're doing. Now a good example for this is uh, by taking a painting and particularly a stretch canvas because this doesn't really work with an, uh, a canvas mortar or a wood panel is to hold it up to the light and try and look through it and if you see any white specks of light sort of showing through those are areas where the paint is too thin. This one nice and thick on the paint here uh, no light showing through at all so you know you've got a quality product. My next tip for you guys is to avoid using or avoid using a lot of black paint. Now, I have a huge jar of it, so you might be thinking, okay, Ben, why are you telling me this? You use black paint all the freaking time. I do because I've learned I, there are certain things that I do that I sort of need it for. However, black paint is, in a lot of ways, a specialty color. You don't need it. You don't have to have it on your palette. And if you're relying on it for a lot of things, then it's again, doesn't teach you color theory in the right way. You can mix a really nice dark, usually by getting a brown and then throwing a little bit of a blue into it to get this really rich, dark color without ever touching a, a tube or a jar of black. Now, in using too much black, particularly if you're doing uh, realism work, uh, it just generally tends to look flat and it just destroys the image entirely. Granted, my work doesn't really fall in the category of realism, so I don't really have to worry about this. But again, try and avoid using a ton of black, because that's just not a good idea. Now, if you're not familiar with this one, it might actually surprise you a little bit more. Uh, when you're working on a canvas, uh, such as this, just a nice base color I've got going on right now, uh, you might want to think, okay, I'm going to start sketching out my ideas. You grab either a number two pencil or something nice and dark, and kind of get uh, a line coming across. The problem in doing this is that once you start applying water and uh, everything to that, this graphite is going to start to smear just like that, you can already see I've done that with my finger. So if you're going to sketch something on a canvas, you want to do something that, uh, and use a pencil that is lighter. Uh, personally, I really like using uh, chalk pastels uh, to give a nice uh, erasable surface and something that's gonna, when it blends into the paint, it's not gonna cause any problems. Heavy graphite, when a white touches it, is gonna turn your paint gray. So for this, if I ha happen to be using graphite, I use, usually use a 4H pencil. It gives a much uh, lighter line and it won't uh, blend and blur into the paint like a thicker, heavier pencil would. So the next one up, uh, I've talked a little bit about this before, but it's uh, using umbers and siennas specifically for landscape painting. If you're a portrait painter, you would be stupid not to use them. Uh, more abstract stuff, you can kind of bend the rules a little bit, but using uh, basically a brown, umber or sienna, light or dark brown, uh, so particularly for landscape painting, is a huge mistake for the same reason as it doesn't teach you color theory. It doesn't teach you to mix and, and blend your colors uh, thoroughly. A good uh, example of how to get around this is to check out my video over here 
on mixing browns. Uh, you basically do the, uh, the three main browns of uh, mixing complementary colors. They create way more intricate browns than you could ever get out of a tube. So my final tip and bad habit that you really want to try to avoid is doing a paint by number style painting. Now what do I mean by this? Well, if you've ever done a color by number or paint by number when you're a kid, there are outlines and there are sections of color that say paint this yellow or paint this green. The problem in doing this in, on a canvas or on a, anything you did a sketch with, you're going to create these little white gaps in between your areas of color. A lot of people, particularly uh, beginners and intermediate artists, really want to try and just follow their lines completely and they're afraid to go over their lines because like, I'm going to mess up the sketch and then I don't know what to do. Go ahead, mess up your sketch. The sketch is there as a guideline. It's not as there as an exact. You have to paint every single little detail in to get every single thing right and thing In painting, you want your piece to look uniform. You want it to look like everything is together and it belongs there. Not that it was just simply pasted on it. And if nothing else, you don't really want to show the viewer where your sketch lines were. You're like, oh yeah, I see what they did there. So these are just my tips on things that I think are really bad habits for painters, specifically acrylic landscape painters to be having. So maybe you agree with me. Maybe you think I'm totally wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe for more art videos like this one. This has been DMC Films at Center Vlog Studios. See you guys next time. Thank you.